Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this lesson, we're going to talk about solving multi step equations. This is our first lesson in the new Unit 2. Solving multi step equations, you have to do it a lot until it becomes muscle memory. So I think the easiest way to teach this is to show it show it in action. So looking at this first example, we're going to get to this list of steps in just a second. We're going to follow this as we solve. So in number one, I see that I've got an equation set up here. And my first step, use distributive property. I want to get rid of any parentheses that are currently in the equation. So here I clearly see there's a set right here. So we learned back in some of my last videos about the distributive property that anytime we have something in front of the parentheses, we have to distribute it throughout the entire parentheses. Now notice I'm not distributing that 4 to the negative 17. That negative 17 is not included in the parentheses. 4 times 2a is going to give me 8a. 4 times positive 2 is going to give me positive 8. I'm going to bring down the negative 17 and I'm going to bring down the equals 15. So I'm going to move on to my step two. I've gotten rid of my parentheses, so now let's look at step two. Combine like terms on same side. So that means same side of the equal sign. So I want to look at each side of the equal sign, the left and the right, and make sure that I've combined any possible like terms. So starting with the left, I see that I can definitely combine this positive 8 and this negative 17. I can't combine either with the A because that A makes them not a like term. So positive 8 minus 17 is going to give us negative 9. So I'm going to bring down my 8A. I'm not doing anything with that yet. Negative 9 equals 15. There's nothing I can simplify on this left side. Uh, it's just 15 by itself. So moving on to step three, combine like terms using inverse operations. By inverse, it means opposite. So using the opposite operations. And really what I mean is get constants to one side and variable to the other side. I usually like to get my variable on the left side. I just think it looks better, but some people like to keep their variable positive whenever they can. It's just personal preference. I'm going to show you a consistent way. I'm always going to bring the variable to the left side of the equation. Uh, in this case, the variable is already on the left side. So I want to get all my constants on the right side. So the easiest place to start is going to be with this negative 9. Now when it says inverse operations, it means that if I want to move this negative 9 over here, I'm going to have to do the opposite of whatever's being done. So right now it's minus 9. So the opposite of subtraction would be addition. So I can add 9. Now negative 9 plus 9 ends up being 0. So it cancels out. We just draw a line through it. But here's the thing. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I'm going to add 9 here, I can do that, but I have to also do it to the other side. So 15 plus 9 is going to give me 24. And I'm going to bring down what I have left from the left. So I got rid of that negative 9, but I still have this 8a. So that comes down. Now moving on to my next step, it says use inverse operations. Remember, inverse means opposite. So use opposite operations to isolate the variable. So you'll notice that variable's got that 8 with it. This means 8 times a. So if I want to do the inverse of multiplication, that would be division. So I need to divide by what I want to get rid of. So I want to get rid of the 8. I don't want to get rid of the whole thing, 8a. I just want to separate the 8 and the a. So I'm only going to divide by 8, and those two now cancel out to 1. But what I do to one side, I have to do to this side as well. 
So I'm going to bring down what I have left, A, my A is finally alone, equals 24 divided by 8 is 3. So I was able to solve this multi-step equation all the way down. I now know what A is. It's 3. And you can always check yourself. You can bring that 3 back up here to the original equation and plug it in right there. So this will be 2 times 3. And you should get a true statement. If you get a true statement, you know you've done your work correctly. So always double check your answer when you can. So let's look at another um, similar example, but we've got some, some more negative CERN in here. Um, continue following your steps. Start with step one, use distributed property. We want to get rid of any parentheses. So I see a set here. I've got to distribute this positive four. And I'm distributing it to everything within the parentheses. I'm going to bring down this negative x. I'm not doing anything with that yet. I'm not including it in this distributing, so it's just I'm just going to bring it down. So positive 4 times x would be positive 4x. Positive 4 times positive 3 would be positive 12. So now I've gotten rid of those parentheses. And I'm going to bring down my equals negative 12. So moving on to step two, combine like terms on the same side of the equal sign. So looking over here at my left, I definitely have two like terms here with this negative x and this positive 4x, so I want to go ahead and combine those. Remember there's a 1 in front of that x, so this is negative 1 plus 4. That's going to give me positive 3x. I'm going to bring down my plus 12 equals negative 12. So I simplified everything I can with, on the, with the left and with the right. So now we move to step three. Combine like terms using inverse operations. So I want to do the opposite of what's being done to get all my constants on the right and leave my variable on the left. That's again just personal preference. So if this is a plus 12, I've got to do the inverse of 12. I've got to subtract 12. And I'm doing that so this cancels to 0. But if I'm going to do that to this side, I have to do it to this side as well. So bringing down what I have left, 3x equals negative 12 minus 12 would be negative 24. And now step four, use inverse operations, opposite operations to isolate the variable. Right now, that three and the x are hugging each other. That means they're being multiplied by each other. So I want to undo that multiplication with division. So in the end, I'm bringing down my x. He's finally alone. Negative 24 divided by 3 is going to be negative 8. So now I know what x is. I could take that negative 8, plug it back into the original equation every place I see an x, and I should get a true statement. Let's look at four more examples. Starting with number 3, my same rules, so my, my rules disappeared, but they're still lying, so I'm still going to walk you through them, but we should at this point be kind of picking up they are and what's coming next. So for number 3, I know this scares students because they don't like fractions, and I completely understand I don't love fractions either, but um, we solve it the exact same way as if it wasn't a fraction. We have the fancy use of the graphing calculator, so I tell them don't run away from fractions. Anytime we have something outside the parentheses, we need to distribute it in, and that's our first step. Step one, use the distributed property. So I want to get rid of these parentheses by distributing this two-fifths throughout the whole parentheses. Two-fifths times 5k is going to be 2k. Two-fifths times positive 35 is going to be positive 14. So now my step two told me to combine any like terms I have on the same side of the parentheses. 
So let's see, over here I've got positive 14 minus 8. Those are both constants. I can go ahead and simplify that. So I'm going to bring down my 2k. That's not going to change yet. 14 minus 8 is going to give me positive 6. I'm going to bring down my equals 12. So now my step three, I need to use my inverse operations to get all my constants to the right and leave my variable on the left, if it is indeed on the left. Um, if it's not on the left, I like to get it on the left. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so um, my inverse operation of addition is going to be subtraction. So I want to subtract six so that those cancel out. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So let's bring down what I have left. 2k equals 12 minus 6 is going to be 6. Now my final four step, fourth step says I need to isolate my variable by using inverse operation. So that 2 times k, I'm going to undo by dividing by 2. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So my final answer is k. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So k equals 3. Again, plug it back into the original equation. You should get a true statement. Looking at our next example, number 4, you're going to notice something about this problem. Not only do we have variable on the left, so we've got this a over here. I also have an A on the right. Um, our rules still apply. We just have to make sure we're real careful in combining all of our like terms. So let's start with getting rid of these parentheses. Step one, distributed property. So 4 times 2A is going to be 8A. 4 times negative 1 is going to be negative 4. So we've got some parentheses on this side as well. That's okay. Distribute over here as well. So negative 10 times a is negative 10a. Negative 10 times negative 5 is positive 50. So now I like to go ahead and get my a's together. I've combined everything I possibly could on the left and everything I possibly could on the right. So we're going to bypass that step two. We There's nothing we can combine. So going on to step three, we need to get all of our variables on the left and our constants on the right. I'm going to go ahead and move this 10a over to combine it with that 8a. So I can do that using my inverse rule. So this is negative 10a. I want to do the opposite, positive 10a. Those cancel to 0. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. So 8a plus 10a is going to give me 18a. Now I'm just going to bring down the constants that I have left. So I've got my negative 4 equals 50. A lot of students ask, does it matter, you know, what if I wanted to subtract 8 and move the 8 over here? How do I know I should move the 10 over here? Really, it doesn't matter. You could move your 8 over here. You just need to know that your A will end up on this side. That's okay. You know, it doesn't matter here. In my next couple videos, we're going to have a situation where you will want to have your variable on the left. So I just always tell students, just put it on the left. I think it's just a good rule of thumb for Math 1 students. Get your variable to the left. We're still on step number three. I need to get my constants all on the right. So I got my a's all on the left, constants on the right. This is a minus four, so I can add four. That cancels to one. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So let's bring down what we have left. I've got 18a equals 50 plus 4 is 54. My final step to get a alone is to use my inverse and divide. And I get a equals 3. A lot of 3's in these examples. These last two problems are very unique in that something 
kind of interesting happens as we solve them. Starting with number five. So I'm still gonna follow my same steps. Looks like a regular problem. I need to get rid of any parentheses that I have by using my distributive property. So I'm gonna bring down what I have over here. 2x plus five equals five times x is five x. Five times negative seven is negative 35 minus three x. All right, I wanna do my step two, combine any like terms on the same side. So no like terms over here, so I'm just gonna rewrite that, bring that down. But here, I've got a couple x's I can definitely combine. 5x minus 3x, that would become 2x. Bring down my minus 35. Now I wanna use my inverse. I wanna get all my constants on the right, all my variables on the left. So let's go ahead and start with the variables. I want to get this 2x over here. There's nothing, there's no sign in front of it, so that tells me it's positive. So I need to subtract, I need to do negative. 2x minus 2x cancels to zero. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Oh, but something interesting happens here. 2x minus 2x is zero. That cancels as well. So let me bring down what I have left. I have five equals negative 35. So I would ask you, does five equal negative 35? Are those two the same? And the answer of course is no, these two are not the same. Five does not equal negative 35. So what that means is this is a false statement and our answer is no solution. For number six, we need to again follow our steps. So step one tells me to distribute. Anytime you see parentheses. So three times x is three x. Three times positive one is positive three. Bring down your minus five and your equals. And bring down your three x minus two. I wanna combine any like terms I have on the same side, that's step two. So on this side, I see three minus five. I can go ahead and combine those. So I'm gonna rewrite my three x. Three minus five is negative two equals three x minus two. Remember, my step three, I wanna get all my variables to the left, all my constants to the right. So this is a positive three, so I wanna do the opposite. I wanna subtract three. What I do to one, I have to do to the other. So three x minus three, oh, that cancels. Well, let's bring down what we have left. I've got negative two equals negative two. So in this case, again, I would ask you, does negative two equal negative two? Well, in this case, it does. These do equal. So what that means is that this is an all real numbers. And I tell students they can either write out all real numbers or they can use this fancy sign, which I like using. It's like an R with an extra line in it. That means all real numbers. In my next video, we're going to talk about inequalities. So we're going to do uh, very similar problems, only instead of an equal sign, it's going to have a greater than or a less than symbol thrown in there. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.